Okay, so now that you have Docker set up, uh, we can continue. If you don't have Docker set up, I would encourage you to go and watch the other previous video uh, re reviewing how to set up Docker. Now Docker, um, I'm going to be doing it from the command line. Uh, they do have an interface, but it's not universal between platforms. So I'm going to be using the um, the command line interface because it's going to the commands are going to be the exact same for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Uh, I will be referencing the UI so you can see um, how things are set up under the hood. But let's go ahead and dive into Docker. So on Windows, I do have to start Docker Desktop. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And currently, I don't have any images running. Now, on Linux or Mac, uh, Mac does have this Docker Desktop. But if you're on Linux, um, you can type Docker uh, PS. And that shows that I don't have any running. But if you type Docker PS-A, uh, that will show you uh, Docker images that you have run in the past but are currently stopped. So now let's uh, go ahead and create our first Docker. Um, our, and to do that, we have to first build um, build our image. So uh, we need to remember a couple of things uh, for when we're building our Docker. Uh, for this particular Docker, uh, I'm going to be using the KCP transport on port 7777. I mostly need to understand the port that I use and this protocol. Um, so I'm going to go to build settings here. And when you're building for Docker, I, I would um, put it here to Linux on x86 and then click build. Now I've already done that. And here it is. So I have my Windows server here, and then here's my Linux server. So if I div dive into my Linux server, here are all those files. So what I did is I actually copied this uh, all the way over to where I am going to be running my Docker file. So here's the Docker file that I made. I have an example here of an entry point. I'll be getting into all of that. Uh, so the Docker file. It's going to be referencing the server directory, and this server directory is exactly what um, I built out for my Linux uh, distribution. So even if you're on Mac, Linux, or Windows, always build it out to a Linux distribution because I'll show you why here. So if I was to go ahead and open up this Docker file, that's what this would look like here. I'm going to go ahead and close this down in the background. So um, when you're running Docker, you always have to build from a base image of some kind. And so for this particular one, I am using Ubuntu. Now, if I come over here and I look at my images, I say Docker images. You'll see I've downloaded a couple of images. So now I did try running it on Alpine, but um, Unity uses the Go language. And so Alpine didn't have the Go language. And the main reason I was going with Alpine was because it's, it's it has a tiny build size. So I actually went and downloaded the official uh, Go language um, Docker image. And as you can see, it's um, bigger than the Ubuntu image. So I just went with Ubuntu. So when you're downloading images, uh, if I head over here to Docker Hub, you'll see that um, I can search for images. So if I search for Ubuntu, here's the official image. So I go ahead and click on that. And you'll see that in this particular Docker file, I'm referencing the Ubuntu 2010 image. So if I go to Tags, um, you'll see that 2010 here is right here. So you'll see that I'm referencing that. And if we want to pull that in, I would could just simply copy this and come over to here and say Docker pool Ubuntu uh, 2110. Click enter and that'll actually download it to my machine. I've already got it downloaded here. But you can see how you can do that with you know Alpine uh, 314 and uh, or Alpine 13.6 and Go language with the tag of Alpine 314. So for this particular image, we're using Ubuntu. 
And the very first line here after I'm saying make my Docker file based on this image is I am going to um, copy this entire server directory here. I'm going to copy this entire server directory into the Docker I'm going to create. And it doesn't copy uh, the directory itself, but it will copy all the contents of the directory. So that's the, the command copy. If you do it on an individual file, it will run that individual file. But this particular line we don't need quite yet. Um, and I'll show you uh, why. So I'm going to go ahead and comment that out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that um, the server file here, make sure that that is executable. And again, this is something I don't need. So I'm going to comment that out. And you'll see that's really all I need. In fact, let's let's just copy this line up to here. And let's comment out all of these lines because we don't need them. So now we have copied the entire contents of into the, uh, the Docker file. We make sure that the, the ex executable is correctly executable. And now I'm going to change my working directory into where I just copied all my files to. And then I'm going to run a command. And the very first thing of a command is the executable you want to run and then just command line parameters you want to pass to that. And you can find all these command line parameters. So if I come over here just to Google here and I say Unity command line parameters. And you'll see command line arguments. And here's all the command line arguments. You'll see I'm, I'm currently passing in batch mode and I am passing in no graphics. And you can read about what those do um, on the Unity manual. But it's pretty uh, basic. Uh, I'm basically running a headless server inside of my Docker. So I've got my Docker file ready to go. So now I am going to navigate to, uh, I know this is on my cur currently on my D drive, but you'll see if I go to CD, paste, nothing happens. It's because I have to CD to my D drive. So um, uh, Mac and Linux, uh, chances are you're not going to come across this issue at all. Um, but I have to switch to my D drive and I am now in there. So now I have my Docker file right here. So if I just look at the directory, um, I actually need to go up one more here. Let's look at the directory again. So here's my Docker file. So now when I want to build a Docker, I could say Docker build and I want to give it a tag. I want to give it a tag. And it could be a double dash tag or de just dash T. And I'm going to name it something. So I'm just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to name it server. And then you probably want to give it uh, a name that's going to be meaningful to you. Uh, oftentimes it's latest or um, I'm going to call this uh, 0 0.5 because I'm basing this on the alpha code uh, 0 0.5. And then uh, this, is com this can be the path to your Docker file. So it is in my current directory. So I've got that. So I'll go ahead and click enter and it's going to build my Docker file for me. Okay, so that finished in about a minute. Um, so now if I say Docker images, I now see the server that I've just built and its total size. So this is in combination with the 77 megabytes of Ubuntu and uh, it comes out to be about uh, 321 megabytes. So now I've got the command uh, in here to start my Docker file uh, as soon as, uh, I mean to start my server as soon as I start my Docker. So now we're going to run this image. Uh, the image is just now sitting around ready to be used, but we're not using it yet. Uh, and if we look in here in images, we can see that is here. So now we're going to say docker run and give it a name. Uh, I'm going to call it my test server. 
and this can be named whatever you want. And I'm going to say the port, and remember that port needs to match up with the configured port that you built your server with. So it's going to be port 7777. Um, and going to 7777. So let's explain this a little bit. So in reality, this is saying I want to allow anyone uh, that is coming on port 7777 to be mapped to my internal Docker's port of 7777. Uh, that's because, so I could even say something like this, like 8888. You know, I could put any port I want, but just to match the server that I, I mean the same uh, port that's running inside my Docker, uh, I'm going to connect the same port outside to the same port inside. But that's based on how you want to set it up. So let's, uh, we're going to use the name here, server, uh, with the tag of 0 0.5. And with that, we are ready to start running our Docker. So let's click and run it. And here we see server started listening. And you'll see it immediately initializes uh, the server. And that's because if we come in, come in here and look at the network manager, it says auto start server build is checked. So that means as soon as this started up, it immediately started listening. So that's exactly what we want. So now we have our server running inside of a Docker and we're ready to connect to it. But we're going to have an issue. So let's have a look at that. Uh, first here. So I'm going to go ahead and navigate to where I built my client last. Okay, so I've got my client here. So I'm going to go ahead and run it. And now I'm running this Docker locally, so I can connect to localhost. So I'll go ahead and try to join the server here, see what happens. And you'll see it's running, it's running, it's running. It's trying to connect trying to connect and you'll see it fails to connect and you're like well wait a minute this is built trying to connect to port 7777 and we've got that connected here it's coming in it's not a firewall issue it's not anything like that if we look here um you know we can inspect this we see it allows anyone connecting on 7777 to go 777 on tcp and that's where it becomes very important to understand what transport layer you are using. Because the KCP transport layer uses UDP. And so we are trying to connect UDP uh, uh, to a TCP enabled port. And so we actually need to fix our Docker to listen on UDP. So let's go ahead and stop this Docker. Okay. So if we look at Docker PS, see it's not running, but if we do Docker PS dash A, we can see that it was running in the past and it gives us a pretty unhelpful exit code. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete this Docker. So I'm gonna say Docker remove my test server. Okay, we see it's gone. And now we're going to go back to our run command again. And instead of connecting by default, if you don't specify what type it is, it'll connect to TCP. We are going to say UDP and start it up again. And now this time when I try to join the server, voila, it works. And so if we come up and have another client here, let's have him look around. <laughs> okay, if I can get things, here we go. So there we, there we go. We got ourselves a server running in Docker. So now that you uh, understand how to build and run in a Docker, you can actually use that exact same run command in any environment. Now we can take this Docker image. We can run it on a Linux machine. We can run it on a Windows machine. We can run it on a Mac machine. And it's going to perform the same um, as long as Docker is installed. And now you can do the same thing. You can take this Docker image and you can go up to uh, GCP Cloud, Azure, uh, AWS. Um, you know, you can have a Kubernetes cluster. You can be able to run these in there um, and take advantage of Docker.